hot luck we don't need Don't be died a thousand deaths I haven't it is just winter in London no one has seen the sun in about three winters <laughs> it feels like um how are we all I'm just gonna be honest and tell you all I have been miserable it's been a long winter for sure I have been so of such a negative disposition, which is not my normal state. I could have won the lottery even in January and my first response would have been, does it come with paperwork? I have not been able to see a single positive thing in a single thing, um, which I think is fine. And I think is a symptom of the weather and I'm ill again, everyone's ill, constantly ill. People you get better for a week and then someone else comes and strikes you down. No matter how many vitamins you take, I'm positively rattling with vitamins every day. Um, and still, some new lurgy comes and gets you. But here I am complaining on the internet because I was going to wait, trying to wait to start filming until I was in a better mood. But um, we could be waiting all year for that. And you could never hear from me again if we waited for that day to come. Um, so it's Friday. Um, I leave for New York on Monday. I've got a busy day in town today. It's raining. Obviously, it's raining. It's great. Obviously, it's great. It's miserable. Obviously, it goes without saying. Um, <laughs> but I am going for a facial, so we can't complain too much. Um, actually, we can't complain at all about that. I'm going to Fefasal again. My skin's been bad this month. Bad, bad, bad. I've um, been so hormonal as well, also adding to the general doom and gloom. Um, really hormonal, and it's really come for my skin. And I've had two really stubborn spots on the squishy 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 bit of my face which just take forever to go um so that's obviously also not added to how to me feeling good because i just feel like crap um and i'm sorry for complaining on the internet but i think sometimes we all just feel this way don't we um so yeah i've got a couple of meetings today and then facial fefacel this is my second no this is my third laser um there, which I'm going to show you what they do today um, and it's two different lasers at once the last two times I've had it it definitely makes you break out in like a purging way afterwards any little like under the skin ones will come out and then they go very 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 quickly a lot quicker than a spot would normally go but the last time I had it I definitely didn't notice great results because then I was so hormonal and my skin broke out but the first time I had it I noticed great results and my skin was really clear and very glowy and just had a quite a different texture to it. So I'm really looking forward to having it for a third time. Um, although I am doing my period in like a week or so. I, I am, I'm just basically wanting to share this skin journey with you all. But I'm finding it really hard to work out what does and doesn't work. When so much of it for me is obviously hormonal. And it's either stuck in a cycle of it breaks out when I ovulate or it breaks out when I'm coming on my period. Which is obviously every fucking two weeks. So, so where's the break in that where you can be like, okay, this is working. Um, so I'm just going to keep sharing things as we go. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to have this laser today to see what happens over the next few weeks with my skin. But regardless of the results, just going there is heavenly. I can't wait to be there. Um, anyway, I'm going to put some makeup on because I'm also not feeling confident enough to go out without makeup for the first half of the day. Um, also almost finished by said revisited. Oh, my bookmark's fallen out. Mum got me this bookmark for Christmas. I don't know if I've said this before, but I really like naff things. We love chic things most of the time, but occasionally I just love something really kitsch and naff, which I would, in a complimentary way, Mum, consider this bookmark. It's got little, like, his paws hold on to the end of the book like this. 
Um, so that's how much close home to finishing brides had revisited. To say it's a 350 page book, it's just taken me a while to get through this book. Um, and it's not particularly heavy. It's very like floral language. Um, but I'm not finding it a heavy read, but I'm also not finding it something that I completely race through. But I'm going to talk about it more when I've finished it. Um, and oh, something that did cheer me up for five minutes was, <laughs> was this dressing gown from Tecla. I've never been sent a Tecla dressing gown before. They gifted me it and I was very excited about it. And I love this colourway. And I don't actually have a toweling dressing gown. I have a fleecy one from Soho House, which I don't recommend because it doesn't have pockets. Um, and I have the linen ones from Deji Studios, which I do recommend if you're in a hot climate. They're so good. But I, I have been, had a um, toweling dressing gown hole in my life, which has been obviously, as you can imagine, very difficult to live with. And I've been barely making it through each day. Um, but things are looking up for me now because I've got this one and I love it and it's got it's got three pockets in fact it's got a breast pocket and then two pockets here and then it has this this I like this I love it and um, I'm wearing it loads because I've been poorly as well so it came at a really good time I've just been schlepping around the house in my dressing gown um so thank you Tecla for this I bought a few new books as well the other week which I'm really excited to read. Hang on, let me grab the long bedside table. Um, I went into Waterstones, walked in saying, oh, I'm just gonna have a look, I'm not gonna buy anything. 50 pound later and four books. Um, I bought Julian Barnes, The Sense of an Ending. It's suddenly when I was in there, I had a moment of like, oh my God, I'm gonna read every Man Booker winner since the year I was born, which was 1992. Am I going to do that? Probably not, but it felt like a good idea at the time. Um, so this won the one in 2011, so we're making progress. Um, this, I bought Burn and Wood by Eleanor Catton, who wrote The Luminaries, which I haven't read because it's intimidatingly large, but lots of people have read and said it's very nice and good, nice and good, and has a nice cover. Um, this hasn't won the Booker Prize, um, so this isn't going to be part of my project that I may or may not do, but there's that one. And then I got, this won the Booker Prize this year, Prophet Song by Paul Lynch, which I'm really excited about reading this actually. I keep seeing lots of people talk about this online. Oh, lovely big font, lovely, lovely big font. It's one of the things I do like about hardback, often love a big font. And this was shortlisted for the Booker Prize. Um, I saw lots of people reading recently too, um, The Bee Sting by Paul Murray. So lots of things I'm excited about. I'm hoping I'll finish Bright Head Revisited today because I'm on the train at various points, which is my favourite reading space. Um, so hopefully I can finish it and then start on with the next book. Um, this highlighter from Merit is so good, by the way. It's in the shade Carver, Day Glow Highlighting Balm. It's really, when I see photos of myself when I'm wearing this, I genuinely makes you look like you have a glow coming from within, which achieving that look in January in London is nothing short of a miracle, actually, I'd say. Um, anyway, I've been talking for 10 minutes, which is insane. I've been complaining for 10 minutes what I've been doing. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to get ready for the day. And we're just going to tackle it with a positive attitude somehow. Um, and have a productive day with a facial in the middle. What does one have to be negative about if they've got a facial in the middle of their day? Nothing. I need a firm slap around the face and someone to tell me to get a grip. Oh, do I want to put mascara on? No, I'm not going to do that because then the lady at the facial is going to have to rub my eyes to get it off. She would do gently, but I don't want her to make her do that. <laughs> I haven't um, worn these Todd's loafers in ages. I forgot how comfortable they are. They're great. We'd rather not be wearing them with black socks, but here we are. We've no choice on the matter. Here we go. Arrived for my afternoon nap, aka my facial. I am. 
am drenched. It's just this very building at the very end with that light. Quite literally the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Yes. That looks so good. It's one of the best tiramisu. Oh. Oh my god, yes. Hello guys. Skin chat. This is the day after facial, after laser. You can see some redness. This is most, this is all very smooth actually. This is um, just scarring from previous spots. Um, and I often have just lots of congestion and like under the skin bumpiness that never, you can't really see on camera, but you can see in certain lights and when you touch my skin. That has completely gone. It all feels a lot smoother. Obviously this spot's still a bit stubborn and the one underneath it. Um, but I wasn't expecting this just to disappear, obviously. A bit of redness through my cheeks. I did go out and have half a bottle of wine and a tear of soup. So a lot of sugar, which was exactly what she told me not to do. And I didn't, I didn't listen. I went and did that. So we're a bit hungover today. So this is also hungover, slightly underslept skin. So I'm not helping myself. However, I really enjoyed my wine and my tear of soup. So I don't regret it too much. Um, oh yeah, the texture is the main thing that really changes, I think. Because like I said, normally I feel like my skin's become quite textured. It feels a lot smoother. And that redness also, it's just been kind of ever present this winter, unfortunately. So I'm feeling really pleased with it today. I'm feeling a lot more confident about it. I'm still going to go put some makeup on. Still not at that level of confidence. But we're moving in the right direction, hopefully. Um, and yeah, I just finished where I said Revisited, which I really liked. I'm going to watch a TV show, which I'm really excited about. Um... But yeah, I really enjoyed it. I really recommend it, actually. I found it, it took me quite a while to get through, and I found it quite easy to put down when I was reading it. But then whenever I did put it down, I would be like walking around the house and realising that I was vaguely thinking about Sebastian. Um, for, if you don't know the story, it's about um, the narrator's child rider um, who meets Sebastian Fleet at Oxford University. It's Saltburn is completely inspired by it. Um, and Sebastian is from a very wealthy family who have this ginormous estate, the Bridehead estate, this huge, incredible, massive stately home. Um, and Charles and Sebastian fall in love at university. And it then follows Charles's enmeshment with the family, not just Sebastian, um, his relationship with all of them, his four siblings and the mother and the father over the course of the next few years of his life, I suppose. I actually don't know what age he is. I think he's 19 when we when we start the story. And I'm not sure what age he is when you finish the story. It, it finishes in the Second World War and starts post First World War. So sometime within that date range. Um, and yet yeah, the kind of overarching theme is Catholic guilt, I suppose. It was a lot more about religion than I thought it was going to be and how that Catholic guilt, Charles is agnostic, but how it tears apart um, and affects the relationship that he has with all of the different family members um, and like the undertone of it is never explicitly stated as being very homosexual but really is um, and I really enjoyed that I really enjoyed the way that his and Sebastian's relationship was written um, although overall didn't like Charles as a character um, but yeah I really enjoyed it I recommend it and I'm very much looking forward to watching the tv show now which is set I believe at Castle Howard which is up north and I've been to it's quite nice to watch something with, from somewhere where you have been um, that is meant to be the real life Brideshead estate <laughs> Hi 
Hello guys from snowy New York. Um, I got in last late last night. Just grab my tea actually. Um, yeah, I got back late last night uh, after the most stressful travel day I think I've ever had because um, my phone got stolen on my way to the airport on the Elizabeth line, which is kind of like the most stressful time I think you can have your phone stolen when you're on your way to catch a flight. I thankfully, thankfully, thankfully had another phone with me, the one that I'm using now, um, because, and this is where sometimes being a lazy cow pays off, I have an American SIM in this car, in this phone, and last time I was here and I got my new phone, kept saying, meaning to go to AT&T to have the American one moved over to the new phone, and just didn't do it because I didn't want to have to go to AT&T, so I just kept putting off, putting off, putting off. Which meant that then when I was coming back out again this time, I was like, okay, bring your old phone again so that you can do it this time. Thank God I didn't do it and had this second phone with me. Um, otherwise, I think I would have been completely stuck. So everything sorted. Someone took it out of my pocket when I was getting on the train. Um, like a man who sort of stood right in front of me in a strange way. I noticed it in a weird way as I was going to get on the train and then made a show of being like, oh, sorry and moved to the side of me. And then I got on the train and like, um, hang on, I've just got the gas on my accident. Um, and lifted my bag up and it was quite heavy. And he was obviously then stood very, very, very close to me. And that's the only time it could have been and sort of the only behavior I noticed for anyone where I was like, that's a bit odd. And then when I sat down and like put my bags down, I had so much stuff, like a big suitcase and everything, then went to check my phone and I was like, fuck, it's gone. And it was already like switched off um couldn't track it all that stuff so be mindful of that if you're in london it's the second time i've had my phone taken from me in london it is rife there um but thankfully it wasn't hurt um had the second phone it really could have been a lot worse and then i got graded on my flight for the second this is the second time this happened to me i with a lifetime of flying quite a bit that's a bit of exaggeration not a lifetime but good you know last sort of 10 years of my life i've been um flying quite a lot and the past two times I've flown from London to New York, I've been upgraded. And I wish I could tell you the tip of what to do, but I don't really know. I'd always thought it was one of those things where you like have to go to the airport dressed quite nicely. And if you look the part and are sort of part of that airline's frequent flyer program, then you might get the upgrade. But it has never happened to me at the check-in desk. It happens when you try to check in online on your phone. And then suddenly you can just pick from a different section of seats. Um, so yeah, yesterday I was flying economy and got upgraded to premium economy. Last time I was flying premium economy and upgraded, got upgraded to business class. Um, and I think the only, the only reason I can think of why it's happening is because I'm part of the BA executive club, which anyone can be part of if you fly with them. Um, but I've also been part of it for years and this, the tier level that I'm on, I've been that level for years. So I don't quite know why it's suddenly happening, but um, I obviously won't ask any questions. I'm very grateful. It really feels like you've won the lottery when they say it to you. I'm like, oh my God, me again. <laughs> um, so that was some good news yesterday, which was good because by the time I got to the airport, I was on the verge of just a massive cry. <laughs> it was so stressful. But everything's sorted and I'm here. And I, I'm also incredibly fortunate to be honest, I'm going for massage now. So all in all, this will be a lot worse for me, couldn't they? Um, I'm going for like a lymphatic drainage massage, which I've never had before. I'm a bit nervous because I think they hurt, but I'll let you know how it goes. Uh, a place called Clean Market, it's a free one um, because they're doing it in collaboration with the skincare brand Less, which you, lots of you will probably have seen on Instagram, L-E-S-S-E. -S -S -E. It's a beautiful brand, really natural skincare, it's really nice. Um, and yeah, they've like collaborated with this place called Clean Market to do these massages for people over Fashion Week. And L Lady Muck has just arrived, not doing any Fashion Week bits. And I've just said yes to the massage. <laughs> um, so I've been very, very fortunate to be able to go and do that. So I'm just going to trudge out into this, unfortunately not beautiful snowy New York. It is, it's been snowing all morning, it's been snowing all day, but it's just slush on the pavement. Um, so unfortunately it's not like a white dusting that looks very cinematic, it's just grey slush. Um, yeah, let's go. Just, 
I don't know where I thought that was going to be a painful experience. I pulled that out of thin, thin fucking air. Thin fucking air is what I was going to say then. Um, it wasn't, it was the opposite. It was like being lightly stroked and pressed. And I fell asleep for an hour and it was lovely. Um, and she said, I'm just going to feel relaxed and floaty all day, which is perfect for an indoor day, which is what I'm going away to have because this is not outdoor day conditions. As we can see, it is coming down. Right, Profit, Profit Song by Paul Lynch, who won the booker last year. Um, I'm just gonna read the blurb, which says, on a dark, wet evening in Dublin, scientist and mother of four Irish stack answers her front door to find the GNSB on her step. Two officers from Ireland's newly formed secret police are here to interrogate her husband, a trade unionist. Ireland is falling apart. The country's in the grip of a government turning towards tyranny. That hissing is the radiator, ignore it. And when her husband disappears, Eilish finds herself caught within the nightmare logic of society that is quickly unravelling. How far will she go to save her family? It was amazing. I was like mouth agape reading it, especially on the fly. Um, it's absolutely harrowing. It's probably one of the hardest books I've ever read in lots of ways. It's so unbelievably poignant for like, the times that we're living in at the moment. And it's a dystopian um, novel but it's so linked to our own reality right now. And, and I loved Eilish as a character, like the, the whole, it says I'm not ruining something by saying this. Um, the whole way of it, oh, I was about to ruin something there. Um, the whole, it has this like feeling of like a woman pacing the whole way through the book, like the way it's written and the prose and there's like no um, punctuation around dialogue or anything like that. And it just, for me, kept this pace up that felt like somebody pacing, like when you're in a situation where you're uncomfortable and you're trying to work out what you're gonna do next. Um, and I'm not gonna say much more than that other than everybody, I really think should read this book. It absolutely floored me. I loved it so much. Um, I'm really, really glad I read it. And it is, yeah, I think it's incredibly relevant to read right now as well. Um, and I can't say much more than that because it will sort of spoil what happens in it. But it's a hard read, let that be known. It's, it's heavy, very heavy, and very harrowing. Um, and now I'm reading this, which I'm loving. I'm like around halfway through it. It's a nice little short one. Um, and I'm enjoying it so much. I'm really enjoying the way he writes. It's making me laugh out loud as well. Um, so yeah, those are the book updates. I'll show you what I'm gonna wear today, actually. All right, so I've currently got on um, these suit pants from Mango, which I've just have been wearing quite a lot recently. They're a really nice, Slight flare, not too. I'm really sorry about the hissing. This is what the radiators do here, and I can't do anything about it, afraid, and I can't turn them on and off. Um, yeah, they're like a slight flare, but not too skinny. I, I am feeling like flares are going to have a moment, and that we're all going to be wanting to wear things that are skinny on the thigh, but I'm not quite there yet. Um, and then a turtleneck from Uniqlo, and then my sir comfy boots, booties. And then I'm going to put on my cause. I'm not going to be warm enough, by the way, just so you all know. Don't dress like this. Cause wall coat, jacket coat. Coat's generous, isn't it? And then take my little set of bag and put on my um, Velvet Canyon sunglasses. I should start doing testing basic sunglasses because I think that was going to take me months and months. Maybe I'll start that this week. There we go. I feel a little bit like a spy, but a very chic one. And I'm gonna put gloves on to finish off the spy look. And I just love these shoes and everything at the moment because they're quite cash. Um, I think them being like a soft suede shoe in the tan, it breaks up my sometimes smarter outfits. So this is me today. Just, um. It's so quiet in Soho, it's freaking me out a bit. Um, so I thought that I would end this video here, what a beautiful day, um, and say thank you all very much for watching, and I very much hope you enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one, which will be with you in a couple of weeks, I think. Um, yeah, goodbye from the sunny New York.